Hey guys, my name is Hayton. Let's talk today about moving cameras. Many of you already know that things that are further away from you appear to move slower than objects that are close to you. But to recap, say your camera is located here with this view and say an object travels this distance. If I move this range closer to the camera, then the object won't even be in the frame the whole duration. It will quickly pass. But if I move this away from the camera, it will be really easy to follow and the distance will appear very short. And the movement will appear very slow. Think of real life examples such as being in a car and seeing trees go by very quickly and yet mountains seem static because they are so far away. So let's just jump right into an example of a camera chasing an object flying at high speeds just above the water. Let's make this object be an energy ball of some sort so we can play with some lighting effects if we have time. Here I am establishing this scene. Basic watercolor uh, reflecting the sky with a gradient and some mountains in the background. Also using the moon for some highlighting uh, on the water surface. So, high speeds mean that water that is close to you will, will appear to move really fast. So, I'm showing this by changing the specular highlights to have some motion blur. But remember, since the reflectance comes from the moon that is far away, this will roughly remain in the same place. I want the mountains uh, in the background to move a, a tiny bit during the scene since they are much closer uh, relative to the moon. But compared to the camera, they are still far away. Be aware that traveling to the right means objects that are static appear to move to the left. I'm also making two sets of mountains, one which is a little bit closer and moves faster. Also notice I'm blending the color of the mountains with the sky, since the layer of atmosphere also increases when you look at mountains far away. Okay, so for this energy fireball thing, I decided to go with an almost white ellipse to emulate a heated core and animated some fire that is trailing behind. Since this is emitting light, I'm also reflecting this off of the surface of the water. Uh, and of course, this whole thing isn't perfect, but small details make it look better really quickly. The core has slightly been moved and enlarged over four frames to create this uh, vibrating motion. So after adjusting that a bit, you will notice it's still a bit boring. Animation is all about making this seem alive. So what can we add that will liven this up? Well, our object certainly doesn't have to be the closest thing to the camera. So let's assume the camera is located above the ground and some trees are passing by. Since we want to create an effect of high-speed movement, I'm making these trees appear only for a few frames. And I'm adding some blurring effects to increase this even further. Notice I'm making these trees a lot darker since the primary light source is behind the trees. So what else can we add? Uh, maybe let's introduce some aerodynamics for example. Again, animation is all about making it seem real enough to convey your message. So, let's make the water behind the ball be pushed away. So, this is the end result. So, these two sets of mountains and the trees create this uh, parallax effect. Now, this is a really simple example, but what I want you guys to take away from this is to think about the environmental context to make animation seem better. This certainly is not limited to high-speed movement. Think about someone walking towards something and you really need to focus on their expression of their face. Uh, imagine drawing other people walking between this person and the camera, uh, like the trees were moving, and people walking behind her or even in the same direction at the slower speed. This is also not limited to horizontal movement but also vertical movement. You see this a lot in games as well. So. I hope this was helpful and until the next one, bye.